say something about what you uh, think or know or feel or believe about what happens at the death of your physical body? Hmm. Yeah. Well, the, the more I went inward with the topic of death, the more that I realized that uh, everything I believed about death was wrong, or was, uh, was false. Including the idea that it had something to do with the cessa cessation of breathing, the end of brain activity. It would, it would be like, um, it would kind of be like watching a movie, and in the movie you're watching Julia Roberts play some character, and then uh, the, that character dies in the movie. And going home and telling your friends and family that Julia Roberts died. Uh, they would say, what, what do you mean? I didn't hear it on the news. And it was, well, I was just at the movie, and I just watched this, this movie and she died. You know, it's, you start to realize that, that the ego itself is the death wish. And, and the first thing you, you find out in this mind training is that any time you're upset in any degree or in any direction, you know, irritated, annoyed, fatigued, you know, whatever the feeling is, but you're, you're a little bit, you're off-center, you know. That is actually what the death is. And that the, the standard for death then gets lifted up to, to reaching a state of bliss or supreme happiness uh, or supreme joy, which would be the overcoming of death. So, what you're asking is, what, what would it seem like with the death of this body? It's very much like um, like having a remote control and just changing a channel. Just you still exist. You, you, the, the, the mind or the soul you know, still exists, but in terms of, of, uh, of what's going on on the movie screen, you know, it would be like shifting to another channel. Would there still be teaching? Would you still be telling stories? Would you be sharing? Are you just one with spirit? Are you, do you still have a form? There's no sense of individuality um, left. And so, it, it already feels pretty much that way right now already. You know, it doesn't feel like there's any kind of identification with any kind of individuality. So nothing really changes in the sense that, that what we would say is what seems to be death of the body it's really just like changing a scene, and your state of mind continues on. If, you're, if you reach a state of peace, any kind of change in the scenery uh, doesn't affect that peace. And then there comes a point when, as your mind is so highly trained into a state of peace, that, that there can be an event we could call the disappearance of the universe, which is, some people have read that book. Yeah, which is which is an event where perception seems to disappear and it's just pure abstraction. Um, so no more colors, textures, no more world, just in the state of being. Yes, it sounds. People say it sounds boring, <laughs> but actually, I can tell you from from just the consistency of the of the state of forgiveness, that it's far from boring. It's like it's you're highly energized. I, you feel like a complete sense of alertness with everything, and a, and a sense of appreciation. You know, it's not. There's nothing like you're not repulsed by anything, nor really attracted by anything either. It's just this sense of gratitude, deep gratitude and appreciation, almost like just a song of gratitude that just goes on and on and on and on, has no end to it, and it's only is the ego would anticipate such a state of abstraction that it would go boring, you know, and, and so that's why you go through these experiences to feel the joy and the, the aliveness and the alertness of it. Because, you know, part of our teaching was variety is the spice of life, and there is something, it's actually more the sameness is where the peace is, when you reach a state of sameness. And to the ego, sameness is, is boring. It just completely inverts everything. <laughs>